Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I have literally been sitting down for about an hour now just waiting until I could start filming because my neighbors on that side, which like where I'm sitting in my house is right on the fence line. Um, they decided to do some garden maintenance this morning. We're in a three day lockdown here in Brisbane. So everyone is at home during the week and they're just doing gardening. So <laughs> he had the gurney, he had the pressure washer out, and then he had the mower, then the whippersnipper, and then the leaf blower. So I think he's finally done. So as soon as I heard it go silent, I was like, okay, record, we're doing this thing. So if you hear any other noises during this video, I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm gonna roll with it now. I have to, I have to get this video done. So I thought I would sit down today and do a little get ready with me, featuring some of my current favorite hair and makeup products, because one of my most frequent questions that I get on Instagram is, you guys wanting to know what my current favorite products are. So I thought I would just do it all in one and share a bunch of my go-to current favorite things are. So let's do it. As you can see, I am fresh out of the shower. I washed my hair this morning. So I'm gonna start off by blow drying my hair just so that it doesn't get all dry and tangled underneath this towel. Um, so I'm going to start off by obviously removing the towel. I look like Elvis Presley with my hair like that. <laughs> also, don't mind my very white patchy armpits. My tan is due to be scrubbed off. So that's what we're dealing with. All right, so before I blow dry my hair, I always like to go in with this hair oil from Bumble and Bumble. I've been using this for close to a year now, possibly even more than a year. Um, this is their invisible oil. This is a heat damage protectant oil as well as like just a general stops frizziness, makes your hair nice and soft, makes it nice and shiny and silky. Um, so I really love it. Yeah, like I said, I've been using it for a very long time. Even if I'm not blow drying my hair, I usually run it through and just let it dry naturally. I just really love it. So I only really run it through the ends. I don't like to take it too close up to my roots because obviously your scalp is the oiliest part so I don't feel like it needs any extra oil, but definitely run it through the ends. Alrighty, so to blow dry my hair today, I am gonna go in with the Panasonic Moisture Infusing Advanced Hair Dryer. And this video is in collaboration with Panasonic. So I'm very excited to share these products with you. As you guys know, I am getting married in a few months. So it's a massive priority for me to keep my hair as healthy as possible in the lead up to my wedding. So when I found out about these products and read up about them, I was like shocked at the technology that they have used. Basically the whole hair care range has been designed to reduce damage and protect your hair. So basically these products have been designed with something called nanotechnology, which to put it simply, just means that when you are blow drying your hair or straightening your hair, the tools are generating moisture particles, which then penetrate deeply into your hair to help reduce damage and create a really nice, soft, silky look. So I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that is super impressive, like that innovative technology in hair tools is unheard of. So I was very excited to learn about it and obviously start using them. So I'm going to use this to blow dry my hair. It actually has some really cool settings on it as well. So obviously you can switch it from hot to cold. And then it also has a scalp and a skin setting as well. So scalp mode is actually used to help dry your scalp gently. So it only goes to a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. And it's basically just really good for anyone that struggles with dry scalp, flaky scalp, dandruff, stuff like that. So it gently dries the scalp without causing any extra damage. And obviously because it produces the moisture particles, it's helping to hydrate the scalp at the same time. And then the skin setting is actually really cool. I've never seen anything like this on a hair dryer before, but that basically just helps to keep your complexion nice and hydrated because it delivers the moisture particles as it's drying. So if you have sensitive skin or if you're getting towards the end and your hair's dry, but you're just like finishing it off a little bit, you can switch it to the skin setting and it will just kind of give your skin a little boost of hydration before you finish up. So. I think that's really cool. I think they're just like two features that kind of make this hairdryer stand out in the industry. Obviously the nanotechnology as well is the reason that they can provide those two settings, but 
I just think they're freaking cool because if you think about it, the amount of times that you use a hairdryer and it dries out your skin while you're drying your hair, like your scalp, your face, everything, the fact that they've taken that into consideration, I just think is so cool. So anyways, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to dry my hair finally. I'm obviously going to do this as a little time lapse because you guys aren't going to be able to hear anything once the hair dries on. So enjoy. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is just quickly blow dried with those two settings, just the heat setting and then the scalp setting. And then what I'm gonna do is add this little nozzle attachment at the front and I'm going to use this to now kind of smooth out my hair. Where's my brush? There it is, it's on the ground, why is it on the ground? So once my hair's dry, I always like to go in and do this, especially if I'm planning on doing a straightened hair look because this step just helps to really smooth out any of the frizziness. Not that I really have much, but because my hair is so thick, I feel like this just helps to create a much cleaner, sleeker look. So I'm gonna use the standard heat setting for this and just basically smooth out mostly the underneath layers. You guys will see what I mean. I'm not sure if you guys can tell a difference straight away, but basically this side is just sitting a lot softer and smoother. Um, and then this is still quite a bit frizzy and crazy, especially those underneath layers. I don't know why, but my hair under here is just really thick. So these sections always go quite frizzy. And that is my hair dry. Can you guys see how silky and soft it is? Oh my God. I wish you could feel it because it's honestly, you can feel the hydration and the moisture. I was explaining this to my mom the other day because I was telling her about these products and how cool they were. And she was like, what do you mean it's like moisture infusing? And I said to her, you can literally feel the moisture in your hair once you've finished blow drying and straightening. Like it's the weirdest sensation, but it is honestly so so cool the other cool thing is that they've designed this to be really really light which is great for traveling i'm pretty sure it's only like 500 grams and most hair dryers are double that i think most hair dryers weigh about a kilo so when it comes to traveling and packing this in your suitcase which i mean not that we're really doing much of that right now but in my wildest dreams packing this in my suitcase will be nice and light and won't take up too much weight and then you can also fold the handle down as well to make it a little bit more compact. So it's just a really cool design. They've thought about literally everything with it. So yeah, that's my latest obsession. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get onto my makeup now. I'll just put my hair in a little claw clip and then we can come back to that later at the end of the video. Alrighty, so obviously I've already done my, like my skincare, my serum and my moisturizer. I'm gonna try and do a really glowy complexion today. You guys know that's always like my go-to with makeup. I like to have really radiant, luminous skin. So a lot of the products that I'm gonna show you, which are my favorites, are designed for that finish. So if you're someone that likes more of a matte look to your makeup, this one might not be for you. But if you, like me, enjoy glowing and looking like a disco ball, you're probably gonna love this. <laughs> So I'm going to start off by spritzing my face with the Urban Decay Rebound Collagen Infused Complexion Prep and Priming Spray. It's just this one here. This just like, I guess is another version of MAC Fix Plus or like the Smashbox Primer Water. I feel like they all kind of do the same thing. So I wouldn't say I necessarily have a preference when it comes to any of those. Um, I just like to switch things up. And at the moment, I've been using this one. It came out so fast. I inhaled most of that. 
I always forget how strong that nozzle is. It literally just shoots out like a freaking rocket launcher. All right, and then for my other primer, I'm gonna go in with the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I just find that this really, I can still taste that primer in my mouth. This really helps to give you a flawless base, like smoothing out your pores and I don't know, just like your texture and stuff. I really like it. I basically just use it towards my T-zone. So like on my cheeks, here, over my nose, on my chin, and then a little bit on my forehead as well. Guys, I don't know what my neighbors are doing. They're still gardening, you can probably hear. They've been on and off with the leaf blower and then the pressure washer, and now they're mowing again. They also had like a tree cutty downy thing. They're just really going for it today. So I'm trying to push through. Hopefully with my microphone connected, you can't hear as much of like the background noise as I can, fingers crossed. I just had to take a quick half an hour break because the neighbors were making so much noise, but they're done now. So I'm gonna get back into filming. You guys saw I put my primer on and next of course is foundation. So this has been my go-to foundation for almost a year now. It's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. Kayla and I actually did a write-up about this on the blog, so I'll leave that link down below, but this is just like the coverage, the finish, the feel of it on your skin, everything. It's incredible. So I don't often wear other foundations other than this, so I mean it when I say it's a fave. The color match is also super, super perfect when I've got a fake tan on. I actually need to get myself a shade that matches me and my like natural skin tone without fake tan. But usually if that's the case and I want to wear it on a normal day, I will still mix this in with my other lighter shade foundations just because I love it so much. By the way, this blending sponge is the Morphe blender. I don't know what they call it. Beauty sponge, blending sponge. But I love using the flat edge for all over my face and then the pointed edge for under my eyes and like the more precise areas for my concealer. And I feel like it just blends everything really, really nicely. I don't often do foundation with a foundation brush. And even if I do, I will always go over the top with a beauty sponge just to pick up any excess. And I don't know, I feel like beauty sponges just make your foundation look so seamless and less cakey. So they're always my go-to. Alrighty, now for concealer. I've been loving this Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer lately. Um, and I also like to mix it with a little bit of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This has been a favorite of mine for years now, like literally since I started my channel, I am obsessed with this concealer. But I don't know, I just really like mixing these two at the moment. I feel like the coverage from both of them is really nice. Depending on my skin tone, sometimes I'll just use one or the other, depending on how much coverage I want, all of that jazz. So I'm just gonna go in with the Laura Mercier, Mercier, Mercier. I said that really weirdly. I'm gonna go in with this one first. And lately I've just been doing a little bit towards the inner corner and then another little bit just there. It's so crazy to think that we all used to do that like big triangle under our eyes. That would have been so cakey. Like, why did we do that? I'm all about less is more now. I feel like I've come a long, long way with my makeup application. And not only that, I feel like it's just better for our skin in the long run too. And then I'm just gonna take the NARS concealer and just kind of layer that on top. Alrighty, now I saw someone on TikTok do this and I've been trying it for the past couple of times I've done my makeup. And that is to just leave your concealer to sit there for a couple of minutes before you blend it in. And you get a lot more coverage and it doesn't crease as quickly. So. I am going to do that and just leave it there. And while that's sitting, I'm gonna go in with my cream contour. You guys would have seen me talk about this a million times before in videos. This is the Clinique Chubby Stick Sculpting Contour. I love this. I'm obsessed with it. This and the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel, my two favorite cream contours, amazing. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit under my cheekbones and then I'm just gonna sculpt a little bit around my forehead as well. Whoops, that 100% went into my hairline because I was not watching what I was doing. And to blend that 
in, I'm going to take my curved kabuki brush by Sigma. And I like to do majority of the blending with this brush and then I'll go back in over the top with the sponge just to finish it all off. I'm going to take the side of my sponge that I blended my foundation in with and I'm going to use that to pat the rest of that contour in. I just find that like any of the excess foundations sitting on the blender helps to seamlessly blend that contour in so it doesn't look too harsh. Because, I don't know, some people are really into like the harsh contour look. I like to keep it more natural, just like I've got natural sculpted cheekbones. And then I'm going to flip the sponge around and blend in that concealer. The coverage is so nice once it's just been sitting there for like a couple of minutes. I don't know how it works. I don't know the science behind it, but it just looks so flawless if you just leave it. Just let it sit for a couple of minutes. It makes such a difference. Now for cream blush. I feel like the biggest tip I can give you for a luminous dewy finish is to use as many cream products on your base as you possibly can. I used to be so scared of cream products, but they make your skin look so much more natural. They blend into your skin a lot better. They look a lot more seamless, like I was talking about before with the contour. It just, everything looks a lot less harsh when it's a cream rather than a powder. So, and obviously cream is a lot more glowy and radiant than powder products too. So don't be scared to use cream. Test it out. They can be very daunting in the beginning, but they tend to blend out like really, really beautifully. Just give them a chance. So... I'm gonna go in now with cream blush. And this one is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. This is in the shade Pinkgasm. I have a couple of these. This is gonna look really, really vibrant. It's gonna look really scary when it goes on my skin, but I promise you once it's blended in, it is beautiful. So I've just squeezed a little bit out and I'm just going to pop one little dot either side. And that's it, we're done. It's makeup finished. Isn't it nice? I know it looks really scary, but we're gonna take the sponge and we are going to blend. Look at that. Literally within seconds of blending, it just like disappears and it looks so glowy. I love it. Honestly, it's so stunning. The other blush like cream blushes that I really love as well are the Fenty cream blushes. They're just not as glowy as the Charlotte Tilbury ones. So depending on the type of like finish that you want with your makeup, those are the two that I would highly recommend. I also lately really love bringing a little bit of blush up around the bridge of my nose for more of like a sun-kissed look. So I've got like a little bit left over on my beauty sponge, just excess. So just popped it around the bridge of my nose and then I twist my beauty sponge around to that foundation side again and just blend. Honestly, so pretty. I feel like I need to give you guys a close up of my skin right now because it is so flawless and dewy and glowy and it does not look cakey at all. So let me zoom you in. Can you guys see what I'm talking about? Even like around this blemish that I have here. So the skin there is quite dry and crusty at the moment just because it's an old breakout that's obviously healing. But with the cream products and that foundation, it just, like it doesn't conceal it entirely. Honestly, I don't think makeup ever really does. But the fact that it sits really nicely over the top and doesn't make it look any worse is the key for me. I just, I'm obsessed. I love it. These products are bomb. All right, so next up, I'm going to set everything in place. So for my under eyes and my T-zone, I like to go in with the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. And then for like the rest of my face, everywhere but my T-zone, I really love the Hourglass Veil translucent setting powder. Honestly, you don't need both. It's just like I am really picky and want my skin to look super dewy today. On a normal day, like every day, I basically use this all over my face, but because I'm trying to get a really radiant glowy complexion and I really genuinely like love this powder, so I wanted to include it in this video as a favorite. I'm going to use this everywhere else because this makes your skin look 
so radiant. It's honestly beautiful. So I'm just picking up the Laura Mercier translucent powder on my Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush. And I'm just going to pat that in under my eyes to start off with. And then I just go in and softly swipe away any of the excess that's still kind of just sitting on top of the skin. Alrighty, and then I just take that Laura Mercier translucent powder and set my T-zone area as well. And then I'm going to grab a big fluffy brush and pick up that Hourglass Veil translucent powder and set the rest of my skin with that. I wanted to make sure I included this powder in this video because I feel like so many people talk about the Laura Mercier translucent powder, which is fair enough because it's like beautiful and amazing. But I don't know, I feel like sometimes it's a little bit over talked about, like we get it, it's a good powder. Let's hear about some other good powders. So another good one is the Hourglass Veil translucent powder. By the way, if you're noticing these little patches around here and here, and here, like at the top of my forehead. That is not the products doing that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I decided this week to try out tan on my face. I've seen a lot of people doing it on TikTok, on Instagram, where they like contour using tanning mousse. So I use like a normal face tan, like a, um, like a tanning face lotion anyway. And then I also decided to do the contouring with like the tanning mousse that I used all over my body. But unfortunately, I just don't think my skin liked it. And especially now that like it's been a week and like the tan's starting to wear off. You know how it starts going patchy in like areas like your wrists, your elbows, all of that? That's what's happening here. So I really need to just go in and scrub off my tan. But I don't know how I'm going to do that with my face because I obviously don't want to use an exfoliating mitt on my face. But that is what's going on. It's not the products. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> I will not be doing that again. So just keep that in mind. If you ever see people raving about like tan contouring and stuff on Instagram and TikTok videos, just know I've tried it. Probably won't do it again. So I'm going to go in with Hoola Bronzer next just to contour a tiny, teeny, weeny little bit more. <laughs> I go in so lightly with this product because it, it really does scare me. Like it's beautiful, but it can look quite harsh sometimes. So going in with a powder over the, the cream products just helps to kind of deepen it up a little bit. And it also helps for like longevity. I find that powder on top of cream makes my makeup last a lot longer throughout the day. And then just for a little bit of overall bronzing, like around my forehead, I'm going to go in with the Hourglass Nude Bronze Light Ambient Lighting Bronzer. This is designed to give you like really radiant, ambient, glowy skin and also bronze at the same time. So I feel like this just makes you look super, super sun-kissed. Again, it's quite like a dark product though. So I use a fairly fluffy brush and when I pick it up in the pan, I do tap it off quite a lot before I pop it onto the skin. In between every step as well, I like to go back in with the fluffy brush that I used for the translucent powder. And I just like to go over the top and blend in anything that I've just put on. I really don't like harsh lines in my makeup. So I spend a lot of time blending to avoid those. <laughs> These patches here though are just really not doing it for me. All right, and then for blush, this has been a favorite of mine for years. I feel like you would have seen me talk about this blush even four years ago as being one of my favorites. This is MAC Cosmetics Warm Soul Mineralized Blush. It is seriously stunning, the color of it. Even in the pan, you can see that it's got a little bit of radiance to it. It's just really beautiful and it makes your skin look so healthy when you put it on. So. I've just got my Sigma F10 blush brush and I'm just going to layer that onto my cheeks. And then of course, highlighter. You guys know I have a lot of favorite highlighters. I reckon highlighters are one of my favorite makeup items ever. But I honestly think the one at the top of my list is any of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. So their whole ambient lighting range is incredible. 
I use a lot of their stuff. You saw I use their bronzer. I do also sometimes use their dim light lighting powder, which is like, I use this all over my face when I want to look really, really, really glowy. Um, Cause it's just like a light reflecting powder almost. So it's not as harsh as a highlighter. It doesn't look as glowy as like a highlighter on your skin would, but it just kind of like bounces the light off your skin so nicely in such a subtle way. Yeah, their whole ambient lighting range is unreal. So I would have to go with these being like my favorite, overall favorite top pick highlighters. So I've got a couple of their palettes. I'm gonna use this one today. This is the Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. And I think I'm gonna use a mixture of these two here. So these ones are Pure Strobe Light and Lucent Strobe Light. Obviously you do not have to mix both together, but if you've got the palette, why not have some fun, you know? Why the hell not? So I obviously take that onto my cheekbones, but then I also run it in kind of like a C shape from my brow bone to my cheekbones as well. And then a little bit on my cupid's bow and on the end of my nose, a little bit down the bridge of my nose. I don't really ever contour my nose. This is like the most contouring I do, <laughs> if you could even call it that. I just like how it looks to have a little bit of the light reflecting off of these higher points of my nose. I feel like it's just a really natural way of giving your nose a little bit of shape. And then I also blend a tiny, tiny bit of the highlighter just above the arch of my brow as well, because that's typically where the light would also reflect off your skin. Just like that. And I know it looks super harsh at the moment, but again, I'm gonna go in with my big fluffy brush and go over the top of everything to just blend it all in. All right, now I'm not gonna do much on my eyes today. The only thing I'm going to do is run a little bit of hula bronzer through my crease just to give my crease a little bit of definition. So I'm just gonna pick up some of that on my E38 diffused crease brush from Sigma and just lightly run that through. I think I mentioned in my last makeup video, and like I've been doing this for years, but I really love using one of the bronzers that I've used on my base as a transition color, because I feel like it just blends everything in so, so seamlessly, rather than going in with like a brown tone from an eyeshadow palette. Bronzers work so well in the crease. I actually just decided I'm going to take the bronzer all over my eyes because I really don't want to put any eyeshadow on but I want it to look like I pulled this together so this is just a quick way that you can like easily do some eyeshadow and then to help blend that in again you know I'm all about the blending I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that Laura Mercier translucent powder and blend the edges these are just some little tricks that I like to use to make everything look really, really seamless. I'm gonna move on to my brows next. I'm gonna do them quickly. I think I mentioned in my last makeup video that I really, I don't do much to my brows these days. Um, I like to keep them looking pretty natural and as fluffy as possible. I feel like it's kind of hard for like my brow type to look fluffy, but I do my best. <laughs> I try. Um, so I'm going to go in with the Hourglass Brow Shaping Gel. This is just the clear gel. Honestly, any brow gel will work. This is like really similar to the Benefit Clear Brow Gel. I can't honestly remember the exact name, but I ran out of that. So I've been using the Hourglass one lately, but I like to just go through and brush the hairs into place with the clear brow gel. And I find that any gaps that I have in my brows, sometimes they kind of get a bit covered up when I brush the hairs into place, which means I need less brow pencil. So that's why I kind of do it in this order. I just feel like, honestly, my brows don't, they don't go that bushy. I've been trying to grow them out a little bit so that I have like more hair to work with, but I just don't think my brows have it in them. It's just not the way they wanna be but I'm still gonna try everything I possibly can. <laughs> it's about as bushy as they get. So <laughs> then I go in with the Benefit Cosmetics Brow Micro Filling Pen. This is a really, really cool brow product because it actually has like three little notches. 
at the end of the pencil. As you apply this product, it literally goes on as if it were like strands of hair. So I just find it a really cool product to use if you're trying to make your brows look a little bit bushier. I do have to go and like apply it to the side of my hand to kind of warm it up first. Otherwise it dries out and nothing really comes out of it. So I literally just do the tiniest amount on the sections of my brows that are missing the hair. And then I just take a little bit of the MAC brow set over the top and brush those hairs into place a little bit more. This one has a little bit of a tint to it. So as I brush the wand through the hairs, it kind of leaves like a little bit of color, which I feel like makes them look extra bushy, extra bushy for my brows. <laughs> I really need to get on the soap brow trend, I think. I need to try it out because honestly, if my brows look good with soap brows, I feel like anyone's can. Alrighty, this is a random product. I just saw it in my um, drawers when I was going through my makeup and I just wanted to try it out for this video. I know this is supposed to be like a favorites video, but Becca, you can't even get Becca anymore. So I feel like this is kind of pointless, but I just wanted to try it. So I'm gonna use these glow drops and I'm just gonna pull it out and grab a little bit on this tiny brush and use this as my inner corner highlight. Just as something different, you know? I just wanted to try it. Okay, that is so pretty. I'm glad I've done this. I feel like I'm kind of betraying you guys because you may not be able to get these anymore considering Becca is no longer, which is really sad. But I have these in my cupboard and I'm not going to waste them. I think like they're supposed to really be used as like a cream liquid highlighter, but I think it's really pretty just as like an inner corner highlight. Stun, absolutely stunning. The neighbors are now drilling. I don't know what. They're really just getting all, all of the housework done today. All of it. All right, and before I do my mascara, I'm gonna set everything in place using the Fenty Beauty What It Do setting spray. I like to do this before my mascara, otherwise sometimes I feel like this can make my mascara run, and that's, that's not cute, so. The mist on this is so fine and it smells, oh my God, it smells delightful. I'm obsessed with this. I literally have a backup one brand new in my cupboard because I go through this so quickly and I love it so much. So for mascara, my current favorite is this Marc Jacobs Blacker at Lash Lifting and Volumizing Mascara. I only just started using this a few weeks ago. I think I used this one in my last makeup video and I've literally been using it almost daily since. I'm obsessed, it is so good. So I'm just gonna go in and curl my lashes and then apply that. I'm not gonna do falsies or anything because I don't like falsies anymore. I can't stand them. You'll only ever see me wearing falsies now if it's like extra necessary. I will avoid false lashes at all costs. I can't get over this mascara. I love it so much, so much. I know I went on about it in my last video, so I'm going to try not to this time, but just look at it. Look at it. It's amazing. Pull up a little bit on my lower lashes as well. And sometimes I like to go in with a second coat on the top. I think I'm gonna do that. Just like a really, really light second coat. Amazing. Now I'm gonna let the mascara dry before I do my eyeliner. I know, weird order, but I don't know, I've just been really enjoying doing it in this order at the moment, because I like to smudge my liner and I find that having the mascara on already, it kind of just like blends together a little bit better. I don't know, just go with it. Um, so I'm gonna quickly do my lips and I just realized my current favorite lip products are in my handbag because I use them all the time. So be right back. All right, so I've got the MAC Boldly Bare Lip Pencil. This is like a super old favorite. I've had this for years and it's just like the perfect nude. It's stunning. I feel like you would have heard so many other people talk about it. So I'm just gonna line my lips with this. And then for lipstick, I've got this Pat McGrath Labs Nude Venus Lip Fetish Lipstick. I mean, for starters, the packaging is super adorable. 
but the color is just like your perfect nude everyday like your lips but better color so it's also very very hydrating on the lips as well and then like i said i'm gonna finish it off with eyeliner so i've just got this clinique quick liner for eyes intense is that what it's called this is the color intense chocolate i've been really loving brown liner lately i feel like it's just a much softer natural look than a black is and it just like defines the eyes really nicely and makes the eyes pop without it being super obvious so i'm gonna line my top waterline with this so it's a very subtle difference but it is a difference hopefully you guys can tell on camera i just really love the way that it just like pulls the eyes together and makes them look really finished if that makes sense all right so now that the makeup is done i'm going to finish off my hair i'm not going to do anything too crazy but i just want to show you guys the panasonic hydrating hair straightener which is a part of the same range as the hairdryer that i used at the beginning of the video so this straightener has the exact same nanotechnology as the hairdryer that i showed you guys in the beginning so it's basically designed to generate moisture particles which penetrate into your hair as you're straightening super super cool and you seriously notice the difference i think i mentioned earlier like you can feel the moisture in your hair after styling it this like this is the same it literally blows my mind i honestly don't understand how a heated hair tool can give your hair that much hydration and moisture but it does it works and it's amazing so i'm not going to question it this thing works so i've just turned it on but you can see here that it has different temperature controls so you can actually set the temperature depending on your hair it also only takes 30 seconds to heat up in total but i like to have it set to 180 which is kind of like the middle temperature i just feel like that works best on my hair if you have thicker or curlier hair you might find that you need to go up to 230 but for me like my hair isn't curly it's not wavy it's pretty easy to style so 180 is perfectly fine for me you will also notice when you turn these straighteners on i'll see if i can pick it up on the mic they make a little buzzing noise now i actually asked panasonic about that because when i first turned it on i heard it and i was like is this normal like i just want to know about it and panasonic came back to me and said that it is completely normal the buzzing noise is actually just the nanotechnology creating the moisture particles and that's what you can hear so don't be alarmed i thought that was really cool i'm glad i asked them about it because if i didn't i'd be a bit confused and maybe think something was wrong but it's not that's what it's supposed to do it's just like this crazy science technology doing its thing amazing all right, so as always when I'm styling my hair, whether I'm curling it or straightening it, I like to section it for best results. My hair is quite thick. It may not look like it, but once you get into it, it is very, very thick. Most hairdressers are quite shocked. So I generally do three different sections. So I've just popped like two thirds up at the moment and I'm gonna start straightening. literally glides through the hair so perfectly the plates just join perfectly together to create a really really seamless smooth glide through the hair I wish you guys could feel my hair after this too because it almost feels fuller like thicker and I genuinely think that's because of the moisture particles it's unreal it's like it blo yeah it blows my mind <laughs> by the way guys if you want to read up some more about these products and the technology i will leave some links down below to the hair dryer and the hair straightener but also to a blog that we actually did up on the when to hearts blog we did a big write-up on these products and why i love them so much so I'll leave all of that linked down below for you guys to have a look at. I do highly recommend that you read up about them and then like compare them to other normal heat styling tools and you'll be shocked. Like you'll be so impressed by the technology that they've put into these tools. And then the last section. Alrighty, so that is the finished look 
We are done, we are gland, and we are ready to go to the lounge room because Brisbane's in lockdown and I can't go anywhere. But if I was to go out, these are the products that I would use. These are my current favorite go-to hair and makeup products. And of course, all of the products that I used in today's video will be linked down below. So if you're interested in anything, whether it be the makeup, the hair products, anything, it's all in the description box. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel as well and become a part of the family. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.